Did this is Madonna on a one-woman crusade to change the world? To change people's attitudes? Yeah. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 celebs who shot down homophobic questions. I feel pretty peeved about it. Well, I'm sorry that you feel offended. I think that people in the trans community feel equally as offended. I For this list, we'll be looking at celebs from the LGBTQ plus community and their allies who clapped back at inappropriate, invasive, or offensive inquiries. Do you recall any other interviews where celebrities shut down homophobia or transphobia? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Johnny Galecki, The View Rumors regarding the Big Bang Theory actor's sexuality have always been rife. However, he never really addressed them. Now that we know you're not gay, <laughs> can you tell us if you have a girlfriend? Galecki initially looks confused when the hosts absentmindedly throw his sexuality and relationship status into the conversation. He explains that since there's not much bad press on him out there, people need to make up stories. Galecki added that he has no reason or desire to respond to those whispers. Because I always figured, well, I'd defend yourself against something that's not offensive, so. In hindsight, host Whoopi Goldberg notes the ridiculousness of the conversation, but it's too late. It's already out there. I should have looked at it before I said it. Yeah, but it was like, maybe. now that, oh, man, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Kudos to Galecki for giving such a classy and respectful response. Number nine, George Michael. The late great George Michael was a huge advocate for LGBTQ plus rights and unapologetic about his sexuality. I have no problem with people knowing that I, uh, I have a I'm in a relationship with a man right now. I have not been in a relationship with a woman for almost 10 years. He used his platform to campaign for causes close to his heart, such as HIV AIDS awareness. Society and Michael's career kept him in the closet for years until an incident in 1998 led to his arrest and forced him to come out. In subsequent years, he criticized mainstream media for trying to box the LGBTQ plus community into, quote, doing what makes straight people comfortable. I was just so indignant at the way I'd been treated until then. I was just thought, well, I'll just hold on to this. I don't think they need to know. I don't think I should have to tell them. He also blasted homophobes in many an interview. Michael was never interested in their views or perceptions of him beyond his music. He also declared that he has, quote, nothing to apologize for. The main uh, thing I like to express is that I don't think it's anybody's business. Too right, George Michael, too right. Number eight, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy's a talented actor who's given us gripping performances in movies like Locke, Mad Max, and The Drop. However, a reporter from Daily Extra wasn't interested in any of that. Your own sexuality seems a bit more ambiguous. Do you find it hard for celebrities to talk to their sex to talk to media about their sexuality? What on earth are you on about? During a press conference promoting Hardy's legend at the Toronto International Film Festival, a correspondent tried to get Hardy to speak about his personal life. The actor eloquently and calmly called out the invasive question and quickly shut it down. Are you asking me about my sexuality? Um, sure. <laughs> Why? Why? Um, Thank you. Okay. He later explained that he isn't obliged to answer personal queries and called the question, quote, inelegant and humiliating and, quote, quite rude. What's baffling is that it came from an LGBTQ publication. You would think they'd understand how personal sexuality can be. In any case, Hardy's well-mannered and even-tempered response was perfect. Yeah, you're not laughing now, are you? Number seven, Paul McCartney, The Tomorrow Show. When you have a musical legend as major as a former Beatle on your show, we imagine you'd have a lot of questions. Asking how rock star bachelor life compares to marriage probably shouldn't even break the top 100, but McCartney rolls with it. When you're that age, that's the kind of thing to do. I mean, what you're doing is you're going around and you're basically looking for girls or whatever turns you on and stuff. While his response is very nonchalant, the host seems thrown by the idea that the world isn't entirely heterosexual. What, 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 could, could you give me the alternatives to girls? Are there others? <laughs> yes, boys. Oh. McCartney's dry retort and his wife's bemused expression tell us what they think about the boneheaded question. The singer can't help getting in one final jibe at the presenter before moving the conversation forward. So we're very free thinking these days, Tom. While Snyder's inquiry was bad, the McCartney's response only makes us love them more. Number 6. Lady Gaga, 60 Minutes Overtime 
Remember when the media and public obsessed over Lady Gaga's genitalia? Well, one person who had no intention of jumping on that bandwagon was the Born This Way singer herself. There was that rumor where that, that you had a male appendage, that you were a hermaphrodite, and you, you joked about it on the stage last night. Maybe I do. <laughs> But, but it's interesting. Would it be so terrible? She was usually known to crack jokes about these baseless claims with her fans during concerts. And she had the best response to these rumors when she was asked about them during a 60 Minutes Overtime interview with Anderson Cooper. Rather than confirm whether or not it's true, she ridiculed the entire conversation. Why the hell am I going to waste my time and give a press release about whether or not I have a penis? My fans don't care, and neither do I. Gaga's LGBTQ plus fans applauded her for refusing to validate the gossip. They thanked her for standing up for them in a world that tries to shame them for who they are. You're hoping to speak to people who feel different, who, people, who, who feel disconnected? People who feel disconnected from society or disenfranchised, feel like a freak, feel like you don't belong, like you don't fit in, or you'll never be great. Number 5. Janet Mock – Pierce Morgan Live in 2014, transgender activist and actress Janet Mock appeared on Pierce Morgan's show to promote her book, Redefining Realness. However, the presenter seemed more interested in discussing her transition. In 2009, you meet a man, and you fall in love with this man, but there's something you have to tell him, something pretty big you have to tell him that he doesn't know, which is that you used to be yourself a man. Morgan showed a disrespectful lack of understanding or compassion for the transgender experience. The Pose actress called out Morgan for trying to use her life for entertainment value and for his, quote, reductive thinking about gender. It further showed other people in my community that if Janet Mock can be misgendered, if she can be labeled something that she is not, then how, what does that mean for me? She later appeared on The Colbert Report to discuss the contentious interview. In 2017, The Breakfast Club presenters and their guest, Lil Duval, made horrendously offensive comments about trans women and mocked her book. This prompted Mock to write a powerful essay for Allure. She'd had enough of the ignorance and implored people to educate themselves. Does it ever make you feel like, I don't gotta make you understand most, <laughs> most in my everyday life, that's how I feel. But the work that I'm committed mm -hmm. to doing is having these difficult conversations. But I want number four, Melissa Etheridge, The View. While appearing on The View, the singer-songwriter expressed her disappointment over Proposition Eight, which invalidated same-sex marriages in California. To actually see human rights be up for a vote mm -hmm. in this Proposition Eight, and and to for to have people vote to take away rights is, to me, at the core, is very un-American. She politely called out The View co-host, Elizabeth Hasselbeck, for misleading viewers on the matter in a previous episode. After a mildly heated debate over marriage equality, Etheridge point-blankly asked Hasselbeck whether she was a supporter of same-sex marriage. The presenter refused to answer the question and simply repeated that Prop 8 wasn't personal to her. For me, it's just a legal issue. I think that it should come from the people. I don't think activist judges should be deciding what's right for the rest of the country. Okay. We admire Etheridge's ability to stay cool, calm, and collected in this tense situation. The debate ended with Sherry Shepard sending the singer to perform her song and suggesting they continue the discussion at a later date. Thomas Jefferson wrote a paper mm -hmm. on the, the rights of the minority should never be voted on by the direct democracy, by the, the majority. That should never happen. Number three, Madonna. Madonna is arguably one of the LGBTQ plus community's biggest allies. In 1991, while promoting her Truth or Dare documentary, the singer was questioned about her openness to sex and sexuality. She said that the lack of conversation surrounding these subjects contributed to some of society's biggest problems. If it provo provokes an open discussion about sex with their parents, I think this is a really good thing. Madonna hoped her actions and the dialogue they created would better educate young people and help them become more accepting of others. The Vogue singer also called out the hypocrisy over the double standards in American media. We already have these videos that display degradation to women and violence that are played 24 hours a day, but yet they don't want to have a video playing that deals with sex between two consenting adults. In another interview, when challenged over how her documentary could offend homophobes, Madonna made it very clear that she could not care less. Your fans will love the film, I think, but some people are going to find sections of it offensive. Well, that's their problem, though. You, you don't if care? They're 
No, of course not. Number two, Ricky Martin. In 2010, Ricky Martin decided to live life as an out and proud gay man. But the Live in La Vida Loca singer often found his sexuality at the center of the rumor mill before this point. In 2000, journalist Barbara Walters tried to push a visibly uncomfortable Martin to address his sexuality in a televised interview. You know, you could stop these rumors. You could say, as many artists have, yes, I am gay. Or you could say, no, I'm not. Or you could leave it as you are ambiguous. Watching her force him into the hot seat is incredibly painful to watch. Years later, he recalled how violated he felt by her incessant questioning. He added that trying to force someone to come out was just wrong. If you have an egg and you open it from the outside, only death comes out. But if the egg opens up from the inside, life comes out. So be careful. In 2006, Walters acknowledged that her invasive questions were out of line. Unless someone is openly gay and happy to talk about it, it's nobody's business, including mine. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Ariana Grande, Power 106 FM. Grande also had to shut down sexist comments during this very same interview. Good. The champagne bottle's so yeah. cute, too. I love the champagne bottle. The unicorn's great, obviously, of course. Girls. Um, yeah, boys. Many boys <laughs> use the unicorn. Whoa, boys. You need Which a little one? brushing up on equality over here. <laughs> Mariah Carey, Total Request Live. Go, Mariah. Don't let Carson Daly or anyone else tell what people can or can't wear. We might do a clothing line or something. You're right. So perhaps like this could be the start of it. That, of course, would be the girls' division of our clothing line. <laughs> well, a guy could wear this. What's wrong with a guy wearing sure, this? Sure, sure, sure. Ellen DeGeneres, The Howard Stern Show. DeGeneres called out Caitlyn Jenner's struggles with marriage equality. I don't fully understand all of that, but I want her to be happy, which is what I want for her for me, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, it I, just it doesn't make sense that yeah. someone wouldn't even understand that. I, yeah. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Laverne Cox, Katie. This actress and LGBTQ activist is a fierce advocate for transgender equality and visibility. Cox never shies away from educating on transgender issues and has no problem putting people in their place when necessary. My transition was about me existing in public space and thriving in society, and because I was able to do that, I've been able to thrive. That's all we want. On one occasion, she politely explained to Wendy Williams what it means to be transgender while refusing to engage in conversation about her breasts. Cox also clapped back at Travis Weber when he insisted that trans women shouldn't be allowed to use female bathrooms. I think it's important when we have conversations with and about transgender people that, that we do not reduce us to body parts. We are more than the sum of our parts. However, the most famous occasion might be when she overheard Katie Couric asking model Carmen Carrera inappropriate and uncomfortable questions about her physical appearance. Cox stepped in and respectfully explained why questions like these are problematic. The, the preoccupation with transition and with surgery objectifies trans people, and then we don't get to really, really deal with the real lived experiences, the reality of, of trans people's lives. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.